Hey, internets. So people have been asking me to comment on this man versus bear thing, which is kind of really dumb viral trend, where people are asked the question, would you rather randomly encounter a bear in the woods or a man in the woods? And much to the dismay of those of us who possess common sense, many people are answering that they would rather randomly encounter a bear. Now, normally I don't comment on this kind of viral Twitter and TikTok mind rot very often, because there's a ton of social commentators out there who already say most of what needs to be said about this, and I prefer to focus a bit more on philosophy as well as things that people have not already said. But in this case, I'll do it, because as it turns out, there are a few things that a lot of people are missing. Mainly how this whole ordeal is a perfect example of how the empiricist epistemology is just midwit cope. When you pretend that data that isn't readily available just doesn't exist and can therefore be ignored, which is a reasoning mistake very typical of midwittery, you end up with people who don't actually suffer from any kind of mental disability saying things that are just completely unbelievably stupid. This is why you need rationalism in order to truly understand the world. In other words, you need to know how to count the things that can't necessarily instantly be counted, or else you're going to eventually find yourself saying or thinking something that is really, really stupid. Like this, for example. I definitely have mixed feelings. On one hand, I don't like the whole, like, and men are awful, they're all dangerous, evil, whatever. Like, I don't like that line of arguments, and it feels very virtue signally. But then on the other hand, even as a guy in the woods, if I encounter a bear, I'll be a little freaked out for sure, but bears are almost like NPCs, if you think about it. Like, most animals are. They have a predetermined amount of, like, behaviors they're likely to engage in, and most of them are not going to be violent. But if you encounter a human, that's one of the scariest things you can encounter in the woods is just a guy. You know, especially at night when you're camping or, or whatever. It could be a hunter. It could be a hiker. It could be a camper. But come on. We all know that in the middle of the woods, one of the most dangerous things you could encounter is, an, is man. You know, man is the most dangerous predator. So... Yeah, so that was pretty dumb, but there's actually a lot more under the hood here that makes it extra insane when you understand it. Now, first of all, understand that this is just a small clip from a larger video from Xander Hall. However, the rest of his video is really just him poorly attempting to refute Ho Math by calling him an incel. Because I guess in Xander Hall's mind he thinks saying incel makes him correct. Yeah. There's a reason I don't really refute Xander Hall that often. He's basically just Voosh minus one SD. The type of person who is unable to see through the type of rhetoric where someone just tries to present mockery and name calling as if it's some kind of valid refutation. I think the people who actually get fooled by that type of rhetoric probably wouldn't be able to comprehend anything I had to say about it. No, seriously, that's all he does. He just calls Ho Math an incel while misinterpreting everything he says in the most uncharitable fashion and failing to comprehend any of his points. It's a very low-level video in terms of intellectual content. So in case anyone was wondering why I'm only really clipping about one minute out of a 40-minute long video, well, now you know. I could go through the entire video and pick out every little thing that's wrong with it, but it's frankly not worth my time, and it's definitely not worth your time. But anyways, to first understand why he's so wrong, let's look at a tweet from somebody else for a second. Atheist Girl has this brilliant thing to point out to us. The chances of being injured by a bear are approximately 1 in 2.1 million, according to the National Park Service. You are more likely to be killed by a bee than a bear. And then she cites that every 68 seconds a woman is assaulted. And this is just the basic problem with the empiricist epistemology. When you reject rationalism, or in other words, you reject logic and reason as a way of trying to figure things out, rather than getting closer to the truth of the world, the empiricist eternal midwit just ends up looking for whatever data confirms their feelings and they fail to consider whether or not the data that they're looking at really confirms what they're saying, and so they end up citing data that is totally irrelevant. This doesn't mean that empirical data is bad, empirical data is great, I use it all the time. It's just that you need to accept the use of reason first, otherwise you end up with these really dumb takes like this. Now, as many other commentators have pointed out, the obvious problem here with the math is that all of these statements have nothing to do with the question being asked. We are asking, who would you rather randomly encounter? Which means that you have to assume that the encounter rate is 100%. If you're playing some classic RPG game or something, and the encounter rate for undead skeletons is 10,000 times higher than the encounter rate for undead dragon, well, statistically, most gamers will probably die to the skeletons more often. But of course, that doesn't matter, because this hypothetical question is asking which one would you rather encounter, given a 100% encounter rate, on your next encounter. 
and pseudo-intellectual midwits, of course, when it comes to the man versus bear question, are just completely ignoring this part of the question. So the only question that really matters here is how likely is a bear going to screw you up, assuming you are in the situation that you are face to face with a bear. And is that chance higher than coming face to face with a man in the woods? That's it. That's all that matters here. Again, that's why this is kind of another midwit meme issue. You don't actually need to understand anything about what to say in this video. All you really need to do is just trust your instincts, and most people get the answer correct just from doing that alone. So people citing the statistics such as men kill more people per year than bears are just presenting an example of being pedantically correct. Yes, it is true that bears kill less people than men do, but that is irrelevant to the context of the question and adds nothing to the conversation. But then this is where the normies get confused, because the fact is there's never really been a study that empirically analyzes the chances of certain things to happen when someone is actually face to face with a bear. The only way to really do that would be for some kind of mad scientist to go out and kidnap random women, I guess? and then go out into bear country, search for bears in the woods, and then once he finds one, he throws a woman out in front of the bear and then records the result. Repeat a thousand times or so. Yeah. So it doesn't really take a genius to figure out why this kind of study has never been done, which means you have to rely on more qualitative factors in order to have a decent guess of what's likely going to happen in the random bear encounter. And so what people are doing is they're taking advantage of the fact that this kind of insane study has never been done to basically just say whatever comes out of their pie hole, and then pretend that because they can't immediately be empirically proven wrong, that it's potentially perfectly valid to say that it's a good idea to choose randomly encountering the bear over the man. The issue with doing this is that in order to do that, you need to rely on rationalism. You need to rely entirely on reason. Now going back to what Xanderhal said, it's essentially just a fallacy of relevance. The list of available actions available to a man and the list of available actions to a bear don't actually tell you anything about which one is more likely to be violent. All that really matters is that men and bears both have available actions that are violent. The fact that bears are simpler than men and have a lower variety of options they could use to kill you than men basically tells you nothing and is completely irrelevant to the question being asked. So instead you have to, oh no, consider the incentives. What incentives does a man have to attack you in a random woods encounter, and what incentives does a bear have to attack you, assuming the same encounter rate? Well, a bear's incentive to attack you is either A, because it's hungry, and it considers you food, or B, because it thinks that you're a threat to its cubs. There's many other reasons, but those are the two that a park ranger might actually warn you about. If you are given a choice between encountering a bear randomly in the woods, or randomly encountering a bear cub in the woods, it is actually much smarter to want to randomly encounter the bear instead of randomly encountering the bear cub. Because if you encounter the bear cub, then that means mama is nearby, and the first thing she's going to see is you with her cub. And while this specific situation is extremely rare to actually find yourself in, it is extremely dangerous, assuming again, 100% encounter rate. And as for incentives to not attack you, it's pretty much because either the bear's afraid of you, or the bear just isn't that hungry. Wild animals are obviously not as intelligent as human beings, but they are at least smart enough to understand why attacking a 5 to 6 foot tall creature, which is pretty much what they perceive us as, is usually not worth it. So there's a lot of ways to deter them from attacking you. But what about the man? Now, encountering a man in the woods, a random guy is going to have a few different incentives that you would consider violent ones. The first of these is that he's a psychotic murderer, which is very, very rare. Less than 1% of all murders, according to FBI statistics. And the FBI estimates that there are about 25 to 50 active serial killers at any given time. And we are, again, assuming a 100% encounter rate with a random man, not some kind of Hollywood horror movie. So the more realistic incentives would be that he's a thief and he wants to steal your stuff, or he could be a sexual predator. And the chances of either of these being true are also quite low. And there is on average about 400,000 victims of rape or sexual assault each year in the United States. Now, just general property crimes, on the other hand, are a bit higher, at 6.5 million. However, in both of these cases, you have to consider that there's about 150 million men in the United States. And we are again talking about a random encounter. Both of these show that the actual percentage of random encounters with a stranger in the woods that is a man, the chances of him actually having any kind of violent intent towards you is significantly low. We are definitely looking at less than 1% chance here. Most likely because the incentives to not do something violent to you is quite high when it comes to humanity in general. A random man encounter in the woods most likely is educated at least enough to know that he has a chance of getting caught and thus going to jail if he does something wrong. And of course, potentially facing instant justice if he fails to win the fight. And this is just kind of the basics as to why the vast majority of human-on-human -human encounters don't end in violence. It is a huge risk for very little payoff in addition to the fact that most of us at least have a basic sense of morality. And while we're also just talking about the specific context of an encounter in the woods, 
you don't know who's armed in the woods. But in general, it's actually a little bit higher than average. Most people know that you're at least supposed to carry something if you're going on a hike deep in the forest. It may not necessarily always be a gun, but it could be a knife, or it could be some kind of pepper spray or whatever. Or maybe even a machete. The point is, attacking a random person in the woods is generally a really bad idea. And as someone who lives in the Pacific Northwest myself and goes on hikes quite often, this is pretty well known among pretty much everyone. I've gone on many, many hikes in the woods, and what happens when I pass by another random man is we usually just wave at each other, or just kind of look at each other saying nothing, or maybe we'll say hi, or maybe we'll strike up a conversation. People who actually go on hikes, and don't just live in their little metropolis echo chamber bubble throughout their entire lives. You know that random encounters with other random people out in the woods generally are not something to actually be afraid of. But what about, again, the bear? What percentage chance is there for the bear that you are to randomly encounter, again, we're assuming a 100% encounter rate in the forest, that you will encounter the bear if you select the bear in this question? What chances are there that the bear will be hungry? Or what chances are there that the bear will have cubs with it? I'm just going to give you a real simple hint. It's a lot higher than 1%. Ridiculously higher. Comically higher. In fact, I'm not even going to look those statistics up, because I actually want someone to whine about me not doing that. That would be the most hilarious rebuttal ever. 10 out of 10. But seriously though, just thinking about it rationally, even for just a second, makes it pretty obvious that you would much rather want to encounter a man than a bear if you want to, you know, get out alive or unscathed. There is a very good reason why if you actually go to some kind of national park that actually has a chance of you encountering bears that the signage around the ranger station or whatever is going to have lots of warnings and pictures on what you should do during a bear encounter in order to make sure that, you know, you get out alive. As opposed to having a bunch of warnings on how to stay alive during an encounter with another hiker because they know that the chances are pretty good that that's not really going to be a problem. And here's the thing, everyone kind of knows this, including Xander Hall. If you watch this whole video, it's obvious that he knows that you would never ever choose to randomly encounter the bear in this situation. What he's doing instead is more or less defending the feeling of fear. And you can tell that from this clip right here. Out of simple fear? Yeah, I think like a bear would be kind of a cool encounter in the woods that if you handle correctly, you're probably not going to die. But a encounter with a random strange man could go any direction. So I kind of get it, especially if you're a woman. But on the other hand, this whole discourse feels like a massive virtue signal fest meant to put down dudes, because let's be real. In other words, this whole man versus bear thing is really just an issue of feelings not matching reality. The things that would cause a bear to attack you during a bear encounter are much more likely to occur than the things that would cause a man to attack you during a man encounter. It's honestly not even worth comparing, which is why I almost didn't even make this video, because honestly, this is pretty stupid. But it does bring up an interesting question, though. Why is it so many women feel in this way, even though that feeling is based on something that is not true? Why is it so many women's perceptions of reality have been so warped that they think they'd have better chances with bear encounter than man encounter? And the answer to that actually kind of goes back to the concept of the cathedral from Curtis Yarvin. And the shortest way I've thought of to explain the cathedral is that it's the realization that academia and journalism, when put together, are not immune to the same institutional groupthink problems that a cult might suffer from. Ultimately, a basis for what is and isn't considered acceptable opinions, trademark, ends up forming, which causes people who seek prestige within the institution to become more and more fanatical until total midwit takeover is achieved. It explains why a lot of the takes coming from people who are supposed to be our intellectual elites have become increasingly stupider with each passing decade, as they continue to basically just mindlessly parrot each other because none of them are actually capable of doing their job anymore. And where that ties into the man versus bear thing is honestly pretty simple simple, due to the ma equality ma equity ideas gaining foothold as the dominant acceptable ideology in journalism and academia, it is socially acceptable to blame cis males for everything because cis males are viewed to be on top of the progressive stack. And that's not ma equalite, therefore they need to be smacked down a notch. This has led to a cultural phenomenon where it is just politically correct for our decadent elites to greatly exaggerate the threat level of cis men. And thus the reason this irrational sense of fear towards man exists to the point where people would actually choose the bear is just a simple result of the propaganda. When a person chooses bear in this question, what they are really doing is just pledging allegiance to the church of the current thing. 
These people know that it's not actually a smart thing to say that they would rather randomly encounter a bear in the woods. But they do know that it's the politically correct thing to say. This is a general issue with people who are weak-minded. When people are weak-minded, they have to mentally pass their takes and everything they think and feel through a kind of consensus filter before they can claim true belief in it. They'll look to what society is telling them first before they truly commit to a belief. And so people who are saying that they would choose the bear are really just saying it for the simple reason they think that it's what they are supposed to say. And that's really unfortunate because if people were just wiser rather than just letting clown world lead them by the nose on what is acceptable opinions or whatever, they would ask themselves why they've been led to feel like men would be more dangerous than a bear, even though that feeling is obviously not grounded in truth. That's something that too many people just don't ever really do. Very few people are able to take a step back and actually critically examine their own feelings, especially when those feelings are rooted in beliefs that are just obviously, from a rational standpoint, not correct. Very few people question why they've been led to feel a certain way. And that's also unfortunate because if people did, I think a lot more people would realize just how badly they're being manipulated. Because we'd be a lot better off if more people understood that we really shouldn't be giving empathy to feelings that are rooted in things that are just not true. Because it's feeding into this kind of psychological projection game where people are saying, I feel bad about you, therefore you must have done something bad to me. That's what I see is really happening here. People have been led by the church of the current thing for decades to feel bad about the cis male. And thus they assume that the cis male, if they encountered him as a stranger in the forest, would be more likely to do something bad to them than a freaking bear. This type of intellectually dishonest stupidity is not the thing that we should feel obligated to give any empathy to. And that is all I have to say about this. So if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, subscribe. Or if you really liked it, you can support me on Ko-Fi or Subscribestar. Or you can actually buy a cool shirt from me now because the merch shop has been recently opened. So yeah, thanks for watching. Till next time.